Hello everyone, what we've got going on today is I'm teaching the guides from the husky farm where I work how to make a spoon. So I thought that you guys may as well get involved and see what's going on. Right now they're inside getting a bite to eat. Yeah, I'm just getting a fire started to keep the mosquitoes at bay. Okay, right, so we've got a selection of tools over there. Have you got the saw over there? <laughs> uh, Lissi, s'il vous plaît. Yeah. Merci beaucoup. Okay, so we've got a bit of birch. It's, uh, it's green, it's fresh. Uh, that way it's going to be easier to carve. As if you use anything that's dry it's going to be a lot harder. This bit isn't ideal because it's full of knots. Uh, we're in Lapland, that's normal. Uh, but yeah, first thing, I'm going to crack that in half. And you want to not have the centre of the wood as part of your spoon. So, well, you can have the centre, but not, not part of the other half. The, the centre of the rings, you get a little bit of pith in there, you don't want that. So I'm going to try and go down the centre. This is a fro, and this is how it works. Right, so I've already got a little kind of, little bit of a spoon shape there. So, yeah, another thing you've got to look for is knots where the bowl is. So if you see a knot where the bowl of your spoon's going to be, you maybe want to not bother because it's likely to fall out. Uh, so, yeah, the bowl of the spoon wants to be ideally somewhere completely knot free. First thing I'm going to do is where the bowl's going to be, I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm going to cut either side with this and then I can start to get the shape. So that's going to be that's going to be the bowl. So I'll cut that away. And put it. <laughs> so everyone can see. Right. So we've got a couple of axes. A couple of littleish ones, and you can get the bulk of the shape with the axe. So I'm going to cut down to uh, that little stop cut now from that side, from the other side. Being very careful with my fingers, make sure your thumb is out of the way as much as possible. Right. So quite a useful technique, as if you want to cut a straight line. It's not really going to work here because I've got a knot. Whereas if you start at the bottom, you cut in, work your way up, 
and then go down. So because your cuts are all fairly even depth, when you cut down you should take a you should take an even amount off. Whereas if you just lay into it from the top, it's just gonna split randomly. Right, hang on, I'll round those corners off a bit. You're all being very nice and quiet. We can be loud <laughs> if you like. <laughs> Everyone on YouTube's going to think I've got no friends. <laughs> 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 We want to ah, we've got another one. <laughs> okay, so nice safety. Uh, <laughs> I'm an expert. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we we can go over all of this again, so you can go on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can you can watch, but be well behaved. We've got company. You never know, the Queen might be watching this. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> Carla actually really did fart then. <laughs> Hang on, I'm just going to sort the exposure out a bit. Just jumping around all over the place. Right, so here you've got the, uh, the femoral artery. So if you stick your knife in there then it's going to pump out blood at the same pressure as a fire extinguisher and also in this area you may have got other bits and pieces that you don't want to cut off so never ever work on your knee a really safe way to work is with your elbows on your knees because that way there's nowhere really your knife can go you know, so that's really quite safe and also quite comfortable. But so long as you kind of keep it outside of your body, you should be okay. Uh, when it goes to cutting towards yourself, people say never cut towards yourself. What you've got to think about is where the knife is actually going to go if you slip and miss. You know, like for example here, if I've got the knife like that, I'm cutting towards myself, but it's only going to hit the spoon. You know, uh, another pe thing, people think about the hands, they don't think about the face. You know, as if you do something like this, you can slip, you can come up and get yourself in the face. Face injuries are quite common. Uh, also, another thing is, you, if you do that, you're working towards yourself. But also, it's not really going towards me thumb. It's, it's going towards the gap between me thumb and the rest of me hand. So that's quite safe. Uh, so yeah, just think about where it's gonna end up if you slip and keep it well out of this area. A couple of knife grips. This is a... <laughs> you can show us your scars later. <laughs> I've got a few myself. I, carving on your knee, I've got... A, Got a nice little gash there from when I was young and nobody had learnt me any better. Uh, nobody had taught me any better. I uh, speak proper when I'm on YouTube, you know. <laughs> okay, so as if you hold your work up like this and you see I've got the knife back to front in my hand, then you can do like a chicken wings thing. I think this is called the reverse lever grip or something well that really takes off quite a lot of material really quite quickly yeah because you're pulling with both hands you know and this ought to do with muscle groups and yeah it's a really good quick way of of taking quite a bit of water off so it's already starting to look a bit like a spoon. More like a 
fatal to whack somebody on the head with. <laughs> it's for the puppies. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> so you see I'm down to the pith there in the centre. So that's good. Uh, what logs tend to do, what wood does, it opens up. And, uh, you know, as if you have the whole spoon, it kind of, it'll open up and crack. Whereas if you've got the ha half a spoon, it's just going to bend a bit and it's not the end of the world. And also, I don't think you're going to finish your spoons tonight. So what, <laughs> what, what I'd recommend you do is keep them outside somewhere and keep them in a plastic bag. And every so often, turn the plastic bag inside out. That way, they're not going to dry too quickly and, uh, and they should stay reasonably fresh and green. Oh, he's cutting towards himself. <laughs> Another thing is if you work with your wrist, if you work with your wrist like that, the knife really can't go very far. So when they say don't cut towards yourself, yeah, just be, just be careful. Just don't be careless. <laughs> <laughs> Even Carla. No. Okay, so the final tool, the hook knife. So this is going to carve out the bowl. Uh, you can also use embers from the fire. Uh, but what you want to do with that is you just go mostly across the grain like that. And it'll carve you out a nice bowl shape. Okay, anybody got any questions? Mm -hmm. When you were saying that we should take some green wood, uh, could we also take some dry wood and put it in the water? <laughs> <laughs> you could, but it's not the same. Okay. It's not the same. Uh, it'll work to a certain extent. Uh, you can also boil it in salty water, that would be a better option. And they actually recommend that you do that anyway. It helps to make it more more sterile and it stabilizes it a little bit. And uh, yeah, uh, I mean, wood when it's fresh and green, it's a bit different to when it's just wet. Mm. It holds quite a lot of moisture. And, and also, yeah, when wood shrinks, it always shrinks more uh, with the first drying. It doesn't shrink as much again when it's when it's sawn lumber. Anything else? No? Oh, okay. I missed the first half so. <laughs> hey? I missed the first half so. Yeah, I can do the first half yeah. again. As if you, I mean you're going on your little adventure aren't you? So, uh, you know, it'll, uh, Maybe you can watch the video by the time uh, you get around to start Hopefully starting. not. Let's do this again soon. Yeah, well, we can maybe do this every couple of nights until people have done. Right, so, get cracking. Next to the church or do you want to go the one? Carla, did you cut yourself yet? No, but I'm trying. I'm giving my best. <laughs> Thomas, are you going to show everyone your fancy knife? I'm more interested in the knife than the spoon. <laughs> it's a Rosselli. <laughs> it's a bit posh. Tom? Yep. Been walking on it. Uh, Tom's decided he's got he's made himself a little toy. <laughs> <laughs> and Marika's eating cake. I'm perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Have you, have you not started yet? No. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what they say, and then there's three years of knife still not ready. I mean, how many years are you on now? Five? <laughs> that's <laughs> Carla. <laughs> this is Carla's knife that she made here, by the way. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it cool, eh? <laughs> You're famous now, you're on the YouTube channel. <laughs>
Marika's doing something a bit different. She's doing a spatula to take hiking with her. So this is quite a nice bit of wood for that. No knots. Well, there's knots, not many, but it's nice and straight. Uh, what I'd do... Okay, so let's pretend this is your split piece of wood. So as if you take, if you go down one third of the way, it's disintegrated. If you cut one third down one side, then turn it over and cut two thirds down the other side, then it's going to give you like a crank and you're going to have like a nice spatula shape already. So a third off that side, two thirds off that side, and it'll give you something of the right shape. It also works for spoons, uh, but so it works particularly well with spatulas. No. It'll get there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's more like a microphone than a spatula at the moment. I thought it was a seal club. <laughs> you can use it to slap flies away. Oh, definitely. <laughs> or table tennis. Yeah. I you mean... won't be able to pike with it. Anything. Pike it. With these things, they always look really bad just before they start to look good. Mm -hmm. When you realize, when it looks like a really bad spoon before it gets turned into a nice spoon, you know, or spatula. Thanks even. for the comforting words, Tim. <laughs> It'll be fine. Hello, well, let's have a look. It's uh -huh. special. The handle is a handle. Uh -huh. Fastest spoon ever. <laughs> is is that blood? Yeah. Uh oh. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's on them, you two. Well, I think that's it for this video. I'll uh, I'll maybe do a video of me making a spoon from start to finish at some point, and I'll throw in some pictures of the finished spoons of these guys. So, well, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please give us a thumbs up and I'll see you all again soon for another Googly Bush Craft video. Bye for now.